Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at two different plots, the box plot and the boxing plot. Now, the box plot, also called box and whisker, is probably a plot you've heard of. This is great for looking at the distribution of a data set. And the boxing plot, which you're probably less familiar with, is also good at this. And so in this video, we're going to compare them, show why you might choose one over the other. And we will do this by you looking at both a normal distribution and a log normal distribution. Let's get started. For this notebook, we have three simple modules, NumPy, which we will use to generate the data, Seaborn and Matplotlib, which we will use to visualize the data. We'll begin with a smaller sample size of 50, and we will generate both a log normal distribution and a Gaussian distribution, both using the NumPy modules. And then we will plot these two data sets using box plots. So for these plots, we have our, our normal box and whisker plot or box plot where this leftmost bar is the minimum value. This first region of the box is the 25th percentile. This middle bar represents the, the 50th percentile. This outer box represents the 75th percentile. So in total, this box represents 50% of the data. And this upper bar represents the maximum value. When we switch over to the log normal distribution, this box indicates the same thing. However, there are a number of points that are considered to be outliers or flyers, depending on the module. And so we can opt to visualize those by using the, the flyers argument. However, as we increase the sample size, if we go to 50, the amount of data that's being considered an outlier begins to increase. And the box plot doesn't do a great job of capturing that extra distribution. And if we increase this to 5,000, you see how this continues to be more and more of a problem, particularly for these log normal or skewed distributions. And so this is where the boxing plot comes in. If we look at the Seaborn documentation, it looks a lot like the box plot, which we have a data argument X and Y if we need it. Um, but this tends to be better for looking at larger data sets as well as it plots more of the quantiles instead of that one major region as the center box you will see that there are actually more boxes that are generated to help illustrate the distribution of the data graphically so if you look at this we can actually copy all of this code and we will copy this and paste it below and all we need to do is switch this box plot to box and plot and you will see what we have here and so now we have many more boxes to illustrate the distribution of the data. It's clear that for the normal distribution, the boxes look very Gaussian. We have this symmetrical shape here. And then for the log normal distribution, it's also clear that most of the data is found in this lower range. And we have a significant skew of the data consistent with the fact that this is a log normal distribution where more of these flyers are captured as part of the data set. And so one of the benefits of the boxing plot is that when these outliers become more significant or a larger amount of data, the boxing plot does a better job of capturing that. On the other hand, the boxing plot is not as suitable for smaller data sets. And this is where the more simple box plot tends to do better. Now, for a lot of measurement data, this log normal distribution is typical. And so we can actually see the impact of fixing the scale. And so we take the the log of this log normal distribution and we correct it, you see that by taking the log of this distribution, we actually can normalize it and we can see that really clearly with the box and plot. If we do the same thing up here, we just convert this by using mp.log on this distribution. We still see that we've normalized it. However, the to me, this appears more clear in the box and plot if there's sufficient sample size. So there you have it. We have the box plot and the box and plot. In the next video, we're going to compare the box plot versus the violin plot for looking at these univariate distributions. If you want to see that, subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed this video, like, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.